charts. We like chart chart. Vinnie Jones used to play kickoff two on an Amiga 500. This is back in uh, 1992. Ah, come on, Mad Commodore, you're talking bollocks, mate. What do you know about anything? Ah, apparently, Vinny is well chuffed with the machine, aka A500, which he has set up in his kitchen. I told you you need a dining table to use. Uh, an Amiga 500 and monitor and apparently there's some cocksucker listening to shit music in the traffic jam outside my house that is true you can hear that uh, although how he expects to score any goals whilst playing kickoff too which he enjoys playing uh, with such a limp wristed hold on the joystick is beyond us now you think I'm talking bollocks, of course you do. And why wouldn't you, mate? Well, there you go, mate. There's Vinnie Jones with his A500, I told you, man. Well, it would help if it went in focus, just for a little bit. There you go. That's Vinnie Jones. You know, the guy will beat the shit out of you if you say uh, the Amiga shit. That's probably what Commodore should have done. They should have had some PC or Macintosh loser come up and say the Amiga is shit, although admittedly the A500 is a hideous machine. And uh, Vinnie Jones could have beat them up lock, stock and two smoking barrel stock, smashing their head in the Rover P6 V8 of course. Ah well. Ever wondered why Nigel Mansell's World Championship by Gremlin on the Amiga is so underwhelming compared to, uh, you know, the Lotus games? Oh, here's why. The person who wrote it had never written a fucking game before in his life. Uh, Damien Hibbard who wrote the uh, game engine, who did the coding, has this to say on the subject. I went to university in Newcastle about three years ago and studied computer science. Ah oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what all the, uh, the best Japanese coders working on the Mega Drive, the SNES and the PC engine did. They did a computer science degree. Once I'd done that, I began to put together some demos. In fact, I was halfway through doing a demo when I got the job with Gremlin. There's no pictures of this demo. I'd like to know what demos he wrote. Unless they're a fucking kick-ass uh, 2.5D, you know, super scaling race engine. He shouldn't have got hired for the job. Right, I was actually supposed to be helping out Graham who was doing Utopia 2. That sounds suspiciously like a technically underwhelming piece of shit on a fucking machine that's got uh, Nemesis Salamander levels of uh, custom chips. Great, but the stuff he was doing at that point was stuff that he really needed to do by himself, meaning he was embarrassed by his lack of technical coding. We started way back in December and there was plenty of time to make mistakes, muck it up and start over. Yeah, well, there isn't much that was done in the first month that has survived just because we kept improving on it. We should have improved it more, it's choppy as fuck. My game is closest to Broom, VR00M. It's a sprite game, although it's done from first person perspective, which gives you a different view. Yeah, that's about it. Well, mm, something about a track editor being written by someone else, blah, blah, blah. The biggest question asked of any race game is, is it faster than the last? According to Damien, 
Yeah, this sounds like a lie. Everyone who's been playing it, what the two fucking receptionists at Gremlin has been saying is pretty quick, which is quite pleasing. We didn't start out with any particular determination that it had to be the fastest routine yet on anything. It was just happy coincidence. What was a happy coincidence? You fucking drop the screen update to 15 frames per second and it's still not as fast as uh, Lotus 2 on a 1985 Amiga 1000. And then he says, uh, what lies in terms of what lies ahead? He says, next I'm doing the ST version. Won't it be boring doing it all again? They ask him, he says, well, I don't know yet. I haven't even touched an ST. So that explains it. It's in on the Amiga, it's inferior to Lotus 2 on the ST in terms of how much stuff is being moved around the screen and the frame rate it achieves. Ah well, and on the front, uh, Nigel Mansell, the fastest road routine ever. And this is the one for Amiga. Mm, a supposedly respected, uh, another bunch of fucking dickheads, but there it is. You can read that. There you go, bunch of fucking losers. So if uh, the one Amiga is actually such a good uh, games magazine, why did this uh, fucking, I'd be disappointed if this was on the ST running at fucking 25 frames per second smoothly, uh, Amiga game get 90%. Actually got eighty nine percent for graphics. Look at these shit graphics. Look, look. Whoopi do a fucking copy list. Look, man. I've made my first copy list program. Fuck you. Look at them shit graphics. They look like NES graphics, mate. This is nineteen ninety two, mate. We want games that look like the fucking Mega Drive, not fucking. Uh... Actually, I don't. I don't even think. No, I wouldn't like that on the ST. They're shit. Absolutely shit. Look, there you go. 90% and 89% for that. The one Amiga. What a bunch of fucking losers. Those bloody Lotus games have got a lot to answer for, apparently. The resurgence of arcade style racing games, for one thing, they say. Don't get me wrong. I'm as much a boy racer as the next man, but enough is enough. There's only, well, up to this point, because I think Lotus 3 hadn't come out, there's only two good fucking racing games on the Amiga. They both happen to be Lotus. Everything else is choppy or just shit. None, none of the others run at arcade fucking, uh, you know, smoothness. It does get very tedious and depressing. When you're continually swamped by umpteen, unoriginal and generally substandard things. Amiga, are you going to scratch up my Ace magazine yet? I haven't done that one yet. Hmm. Okay, better rush this up. Well, they've given Crazy Cars 3 90% and 83% for the graphics. But 89% for the playability. All the scores are under 90%. Ranging from 82 to 89, and yet the overall score is 90%. Now, actually, Crazy Cars 3 is not that bad, but to get it as smooth as Lotus 2 on the uh, you know, A500, etc., I didn't have an Amiga 500, um, you'd have to play it on an Amiga 1200. And the same thing goes for F17 Challenge and Jaguar XJ220. So he starts off moaning. What they should have said was, uh, what we need is uh, Sean Southern to be contracted out to write all the fucking racing games. Yeah. I'm not going to read you the review. Go and buy your own magazine, innit? So apparently there was a game by Thalamus uh, previewed here in the August 
1992 edition, I think it is, yes, of uh, the One Amiga Games Magazine. And it's called uh, Beastmaster by Thanamus. And it says, with Cygnosis's Cygnosi, two Shadow of the Beast games being such monumental successes, and there's a third on the way as we speak, it seems strange that they haven't inspired more clones. It be, you're right. <clears throat> After spending a few minutes with Thalamus's latest, however, it becomes apparent that the two games have more in common than the word beast. It may be something to do with the fact that the game's been designed by Wayne Smithson, who had nothing to do with Reflections, who did the uh, Beast games, uh, who produced a string of titles for Cygnosis before moving to Thalamus. It's a scrolling arcade adventure set in a hostile world that has the player, the Beastmaster of the title, on a quest to find the guiding light, whatever that may be. That's actually what it says there. Though on the surface it may look distressingly similar to the Beast games, we're being promised a whole lot more. The player can move into and out of the screen as he battles with his adversaries. There are bundles of fighting moves in brackets. As well as trade with characters and most importantly control members of the animal kingdom he meets on his travels. But it doesn't look anything like Mark Singer in this uh, really badly uh, sized screenshot they've got here. It's like a 4 to 3 game stretched out to 2.35 to 1 excessively widescreen cinema scope sort of thing. Like Star Wars on VHS when it first came out. The game's played in accelerated time with day and night sections and the graphics have been provided by veteran computer artist Pete Lyon. Ooh, he done um, Leatherneck, that's uh, uh, and obviously um, Fright Night and the Karate Kid. We'll see how gameplay stacks up in September when Beastmaster hits the streets. I'm going to show you the screenshot here. So uh, there's not much I can do about the fact that some knobhead fucking uh, did this wrong look at that that's obviously the wrong aspect ratio and uh, this is the August 92 edition of the magazine so it would have come out in July so this should have been uh, finished two months later what the hell happened to Beastmaster Bartholomus uh, it looks a lot less shit than um Shadow of the Beast 2, even though they seem to be using a copper list there. Yeah, actually. Yeah, maybe it will look, would have looked. I don't know, did it even come out? I've never heard of this game. Oh, we'll have to check that. 